Nick Pregnant's here with DuramaxTuner.com. Chris Emke from DuramaxTuner.com. We got a Diesel Insights today about towing in the race tune. It's about to get real. You get calls, Chris. I get a lot of calls. <laughs> guys, guys will call in and say, you know, I need more towing power. Um, I had a customer the other day actually bring this up. So, yep. uh, you know, uh, you have a Duramax, right? Built trans, stock turbocharger. I need more power. I'm towing a 40 foot uh, camper trailer. No matter what you're towing, you always right? need more power. Always want more. So, why can't I tow with 500 horsepower? You know, max effort tuning, lift pump, built trans, stock turbo. I love it. I love it. There's guys who do it. I mean, I've done it. Guilty as charged, right? Me I mean, it's nice to have the power. Towing power is all about sustained output and heat rejection. Mm -hmm. So, can you use 500 horsepower towing? Sure, if you're in the meat of the power curve, you're watching your gauges, you know exactly what's going on, and the truck's not in a danger zone. Okay, now, right? let's say the truck is managing EGTs, or let, let's sure. say that you know EGTs might be spiking or whatever. What other risks do I have other than exhaust gas temperatures when towing at 500 horsepower? I love it, because the gauge that your eye is magnetically drawn to is the exhaust gas temperature gauge, right? But that's not the only one. Engine coolant temp can easily get out of hand when you're towing like that, because not only are you rejecting heat off the intercooler, but off the radiator, right. and then oil temps. And okay. A lot of guys don't keep track of oil temps, and that's mm -hmm. very dangerous, because oil temperature is what's saving your pistons. So what's a, what's a dangerous oil temperature generally? Well, oil temperature, it's nice to have like 20, 30 degrees within range of coolant temp. Okay. So if you're 200 degrees coolant temp, oil temperature 220, 230, okay. starting to creep past 240, like, eh, not now, good, right? I mean, you see oil temps going up towards 280, 300 degrees. Okay. There's no way you're going to be able to peel that heat off the pistons. So I had a guy the other day, he asked, uh, he has twin turbos on the truck, right? So yeah. he has two turbos, all the airflow, EGT is definitely managed. Right. Technically, he would be at more of a risk when it comes to overpowering the truck and, and looking at oil temps. Yeah, I mean, he's all that power is driving heat. So heat in the transmission, mm -hmm. oil temperatures, because now we don't just have one turbocharger, mm -hmm. we have two turbochargers, mm -hmm. and they're both oil cooled. <clears throat> okay. Odds of him having upgraded his oil cooling system, probably pretty low, okay. right? Um, and then we've got torque. I mean, you got torque out the ass with this twin turbo set. One thing I like to touch on too uh, is, you know, 500 horsepower, okay? 500 horsepower, you're, you're fully into the throttle using 500 horsepower. So most of the time, guys that are towing are guys that are a little more weary of, of the power or not overworking the truck. Right. They're not using 500 horsepower. They're just in the 500 horsepower tune, which mentally tells them like, hey, I'm doing the right thing. I have all the power in the world. Yeah, exactly. I mean, the reason they're using the 500 horsepower tune is because they love the torque, yep. right? They're not using 500 horsepower right. continuously. They just love being able to lean on the truck in fourth and fifth gear and have it, have it be responsive and have that torque. Mm -hmm. And that's fine. The danger there is that as you're in fifth gear and you're leaning on the throttle 60%, now you can make 450, 500 horsepower, that big thousand foot pounds mm -hmm. number, where in the tow tune, you would have capped out at seven or 800 foot pounds and you would have called for a downshift and got the RPM, got the fluids moving, you know what I mean? Get the fan clutch running, get everything going to cool the truck down. And I would have to say too, I don't think it would be as much of a risk, right, within reason if you were at sea level on flat ground versus doing this at maybe like a higher elevation sure. and going up, you know, uh, like gradual, like grades or whatever. Like, what do you think yeah. on that? Yeah, I mean, you've seen it. You've towed it to elevation. You know I what have. happens to the turbocharger when you go into the mountains. Mm -hmm. Not only do you lose efficiency out of the turbocharger, big time, I mean, Every one pound of boost you lose in, in barometric pressure is three pounds of boost in efficiency. So your, your turbocharger efficiency goes away fast. Okay. But also the air is thin. So the air has less ability to pull heat off the cooling stack, mm -hmm. right? It's, it's catch 22, it's just a bad situation. <laughs> the higher in the altitude you go, you know, you really gotta have those barometric safety limits in place. You really gotta be reasonable on the truck. All right, so I think it's worth mentioning at this point that when we're putting a race tune together, I mean, we're considering the truck is unloaded. Okay. And we're taking limiters off the truck. So that's torque protection from a, from a standstill, right? If you floorboard the truck from a standstill, we want to give you as much power and torque as we can as soon as possible, get the truck to shift quickly and aggressively through the gears to put the best number down stoplight to stoplight or in a drag strip or in a competitive atmosphere. Now, because we've assumed that there is no camper behind the truck, right. there's certain limits and safety precautions that have been ignored. I mean, let's dive into that a little bit. Like, what essentially could happen? Like, transmission, rear end, universal joints, uh, drive shaft. Sure. Uh, you know, you're saying like limiters are taken out of the engine, and I mean, I know there are certain, you know, depending on the tuning company, things like that. There are limiters that are still being implemented, of course. Yeah. But what does it do for the drive line as far as not having engine or drive line protection, essentially? 
So most reasonable people towing can feel when a truck is working harder than it should. Mm. You can feel the flex, you can feel kind of the resonance <laughs> oh, yeah. in the drive line, oh, yeah. right? You can feel that lugging feeling. Okay. Engineers will put limits in so that people who can't feel those things can push the throttle as hard as they want and not get themselves in a bad situation. Mm. Now what we've said is because there's no load behind the truck, the odds of those lugging feelings, the odds that extra torque breaking parts is fairly low. Okay. However, when you put the load back behind the truck and you ignore the safety limits, now you're in trouble, right? So as calibrators, we have to build the tune in a way that protects it against everybody who's going to drive the truck. Right. Not just the smart guy, not just the medium smart guy, but the not so smart guy's kid. So if, if I were to tow on the race tune, right, are there other recommendations that you would be telling an end user or myself to use uh, one in that like type of scenario, right? If you're going to tow in the race tune, please have towed in the light tow tune or the heavy tow tune first, right? You, or even you driven want, the truck empty. <laughs> yeah, you want to understand what kind of temperatures the truck normally runs towing. Get a feel for it. I mean, run it stock, right? Understand the truck. The best thing you can do is know which, how your truck normally operates so you can inch up and inch up and inch up. Well, if you need a little bit more power, right, it's better to start from 400 and go to 420 than it is to go from 340 to 500. I think something to take away from this too is, is there's not a set temperature, because that temperature is a variable number. It's always moving, sure. right? EGTs are always moving, oil temp is always moving, coolant temp is always moving, and under a load, you know, that is also gonna hold true. It, 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 it's gonna go back and forth. Yeah, I mean, if you're towing at the same camper every time, you make mm -hmm. the same trip, right? Let's say you routinely tow the same trailer, you're gonna understand that in fifth gear at 1800 RPM, my coolant temp is usually this, my oil temp's usually this, my right. boost is usually this. Now, all of a sudden the camper's got an extra, you know, commander or right. something, right? You got 2,000 more pounds or a thousand Or even a little more pounds, headwind. Even a little, a little more, more headwind, headwind, a little more water, right. whatever. And all of a sudden you're tempted, like, ah, I just can't keep up with traffic. I need to, you know, I need to get out and pass. I need a little bit more. And that, that's what I'm saying. It's okay if you need to click up, right? Just as long as you know your temperatures, you know what your safe limits are, you know, you know, 1350 or 1400 is kind of, you know, you don't want to be there very long that it's okay to do that if you know your vehicle. I mean, I can say, so uh, back at this past UCC in this past May, um, I had a truck and a trailer I was towing with my 15, our, our old twin turbo yep. truck. Yep. Um, and I was watching oil temperatures get to 215, 220, and I was getting a little nervous, and I actually reached out to one of the calibrators. Well, I mean, and remember, you know, if, even if you don't have that luxury, you always have the option of tap shift or tow haul, so right. you can manually shift the truck which really is a big part of this, right? Shift scheduling and the, the ability to lug is largely determined by the shift scheduling. Mm -hmm. So the race tune, you have the bigger ability to lug. Now, if you're manually shifting the truck to avoid that or to you know get the right gear selection, then you as a driver can manage that. So, so if, <clears throat> if I was hard headed and I wanted to be in that tune, having a basic understanding of the temperatures and things like that, what are some checkoff points of upgrades that should be done? I would have to assume number one is gauges, having an electronic gauge display or something in there to be better in tune with the truck. We're talking about being smart. We're talking about checking data. If you don't have gauges, you don't know the data. Yeah. What other things maybe would be a potential upgrade that I would want as a avid tower? I think anybody who's even thinking about this should have a built trans or be planning on putting a built okay. trans in the truck. There's just no way that you're going to have that kind of load behind the truck with that kind of torque and be tempted by it repeatedly right and have it live without a built trans. So what do you think on average, you know, a, a normal uh, pickup truck operator, what is a uh, usable, desired, reliable power output? I, I think if you find yourself in a tune that's making more than 500 horsepower mm -hmm. and you're like routinely using that kind of torque and power, you probably need to step up your truck. Okay. Right, I mean, it's just, most of these trucks come with 340 to 390 horsepower hey, stock. You're saying step up the truck. Are you saying buy a newer platform of a 25, 3500 or stepping up the chassis itself? I'm saying you either need to buy a newer model truck or a medium duty truck, <laughs> okay. right? I mean, there's a reason that an ISX comes with 550, 600 horsepower. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you, you see the radiators on those things. Well, every, the cooling capacity, oil, everything is bigger. Everything's everything bigger. is bigger for right? a reason. Exactly, right. exactly. So. If, my ideal tow rig, 600 horsepower truck, turn down to 500 horsepower, use the 500 horsepower. If I feel like I'm working the truck too hard, I can always turn it down more or set up my safeties in the cal to protect myself. So I think, I think something that I wanna take away from this is just because the truck has the capability of making that power, doesn't necessarily mean the things that are around it are capable of supporting that power, i.e. oil cooling, 
coolant cooling. Yeah, I mean, you you're normally talking as a as a user, as an operator, you're normally thinking like my intercooler. I've upgraded my intercooler. I've upgraded yeah. my turbocharger. I've upgraded my transmission. I put a but, bigger radiator in the truck. Yeah, but you haven't thought about the flex in your leaf springs. You haven't thought about your U joints. You haven't thought about the rear end cooling. You haven't thought about the oil cooling. Right? Mm -hmm. It's all the little stuff. You haven't thought about the brakes. All right, so we talked about some of these safety things. We're talking about bigger cooling systems, etc. I think it's important just to touch on the fact that the factory does have a lot of safety stuff in the cal to protect the truck from overheating and over the years hasn't that been something that they've been growing and growing and growing and offer more features that might not necessarily be advertised to the public they're always adding features exactly so for instance lml so you have protection uh, against barometric pressure so okay. as, as altitude goes up you're going to get less and less power yeah. just to protect the turbocharger okay as engine coolant temperature goes up you're going to get less and less power Ooh. as dpf delta pressure goes up to protect the dpf you're going to get less and less power makes sense We've activated something in the cal that protects you against high EGT. So as EGTs start to crest 1325, you have the option with our tunes from Duramax Tuner to have the tunes start to slowly back power off. And that's something that you're not really going to notice when you're actually operating the truck because essentially the truck is going to want to keep itself in a power band and RPMs up a little bit to keep airflow efficiently going into the engine. Yeah, so you'll keep pushing the throttle if you want more power. And if you have like an edge CTS, right, you can watch the fuel rate okay. and you'll see that fuel rate go from, you know, maybe 160 MM3, 150 MM3, and you'll see it kind of increment down a little bit. And then you might catch a downshift if you continue to push the throttle. But it's not something where it's just going to derate so you. I'm, I'm not going right? to have 15,000 pounds behind me no, and no. the truck just cuts power. No, it would, be, it would be smoother than your foot watching the EGT probe and trying to back out of it. That's, <laughs> okay. that's the best way I can okay. say it is you, you'd be very nice and automated. And we've had that for a little while now, and we're starting to see some of the, you know, the, the OEs start to adopt something like that. Interesting, the 19 Colorado has something wow. similar to that. Um, the, the factory has, you know, they want to protect their stuff just as much as you want to protect your own truck. Warranty is important to them. Maintaining the quality of emission systems, keeping things from degrading by, you know, having excessive temperature is important to them. Taking that stuff out on a super hot race tune, yeah. those protections are gone. <laughs> uh, normally we don't take that stuff out, right. especially on a tune that's designed for towing. Absolutely. I'm Nick Pregnant, DuramaxTuner.com. I'm Chris Hemke, DuramaxTuner.com. Thanks for watching. <laughs>